good morning uh, to you all. I'm Afsane Beschlas. I'm the founder and um, CEO of Rock Creek. And I'm very, very excited today to introduce to you three great speakers. Um, Dr. Alan Greenspan, who's on the Rock Creek Advisory Board, is well known to you. Um, we all know him as the legendary Fed chairman, uh, longest serving Fed chair um, in um, the U.S. history. Carolyn Atkinson is also on the advisory board of Rock Week. Before that, she was at uh, Google where she was uh, global head for policy. We're incredibly fortunate today to be joined by Jay Sobby, who took over this year in January as the chief investment officer of the Texas Retirement Plan. Um, that, uh, Jace is in charge of one of the largest, most sophisticated uh, pension plans in the world, overseeing nearly $160 billion in assets and investing in over 15,000 businesses. Alan, we could start with you. How do you find this different? And, you know, obviously the central bank's role is incredibly important in crisis to provide liquidity, but how do you find this different? If we don't solve the problem of understanding the virus, in a, a fundamental way, the way we do the rest of the economy, we are falling short in our maximization. And I think this is a wholly new environment. And I think that those who argue, well, we can look at it later or do something other than that, I say to them, unless and until we fully understand the language, this new language, which we're dealing with and the impact that it is having, uh, uh, knowing what the GDP is or knowing which direction various different uh, types of products are gonna be, is gonna be far less relevant than it is before the onset of this extraordinary event. That is one thing that is not happening so well in many uh, aspects of this crisis. I think perhaps surprisingly, and going to Alan's point about the importance of understanding the virus, I feel reasonably upbeat that there is a lot of uh, uh, communication and collaboration within the scientific community and the medical community. But uh, there certainly has not been the kind of uh, leadership, if I may say, that uh, we saw back in the day and uh, from the United States and nor a kind of willingness to cooperate on the bigger issues of uh, financial and economic or on the issues of financial and economic uh, policy, nor even uh, at a political level on the health issues. That, that's one of my concerns about uh, what happens going forward. Thank you, Caroline. Um, Jace, you had also just stepped into a role as uh, Chief Investment Officer for uh, Texas Retirement Plan, responsible for a very large number of teachers' pensions. How did you feel? What did you do after the crisis? From an investing perspective, we had to confront uh, the high level of uncertainty that I think both Al Alan and Caroline have alluded to here about just the need to understand the future and, and what's going to actually actually happen uh, here, uh, but the ability to, to define a possibility here when an entire economy is shut down and you don't know for how long, and when it reopens, you don't know how long it will take to reopen and the consequences of that reopen, um, it's, it's, an, it's an extraordinary de, de, uh, environment and, and as Alan said, wholly, wholly new. Um, so in that sense, it's, it, is, it is wholly new. Um, in the other sense though, the GFC was great preparation uh, and training. So I started on January 1st, but uh, the global financial crisis taught us lessons. Uh, and those are lessons that we have had, uh, you know, tw almost 12 years to reflect upon uh, since. And those really, really uh, put us in good stead. In the GFC, we all knew of the depression. Uh, we all were, just, and to some extent, uh, historians of past crises, but that's a little bit different than, than, than actually, actually living it. So having to have that in our, in our recent memory uh, was very important. And you're one of the biggest investors, most sophisticated on the private side. 
Um, when you mentioned the word liquidity, in addition to obviously bond markets and credit markets, were you concerned that all the private equity and uh, others would come in with uh, big capital call demands? And how do you see that playing out in the rest of 2020, 2021? We, we weren't concerned because, um, you know, nothing was for sale. <laughs> so the, the ability of a private equity firm to draw your capital, well, they have to spend it and and no one wants to sell at, a, at, at knockdown prices, right? To directly answer your point, uh, Asani, we immediately polled all of our managers to just to get a handle on that and understand that. Um, we have plenty of public equity that we could liquidate to, to, to fund cash calls, but what we really wanted to know is uh, we want to know what their draw would be. And even before that, we just wanted to know how the portfolio was doing, um, you know, was there going to be a need for rescue capital in, in certain circumstances? And by and large, we have not we have not seen that. We have not seen draws to uh, to uh, repair existing investments in our private equity portfolio. Interesting, Alan. You do the, the charts that you do every day, and you look at different economic factors. And one of the things you do spend a lot of time on is how productivity has been changing in the U.S. Um, have you been seeing any new um, new life in productivity, or is that something you're very concerned about? And there's one thing that strikes me. Um, namely, if you go back historically, the rate of growth of equities is uh, a small but very po positive, uh, uh, has a very, a very small gain over the longer run. And uh, the reason is basically related to human nature. Fear and uh, euphoria are the two major market generating things. But fear psychologically turns out to be a significantly more potent force uh, than its challenger. And the result of that is that people who are willing to take the risks of holding equities because it's a far more fearful security than is fixed, uh, uh, sorry, a, a, a 20 year bond or something like that. So that there's this bias, uh, people are emotionally uh, afraid, even though they don't, they don't admit it, and they're all you know, seeking means uh, to uh, uh, not be un uh, uh, not not being involved in knowing statistically that equities are the most valuable product over the long run to hold, and yet uh, not feel the pressures. Uh, to sell down to the sleeping point. Human nature has not changed. Market valuations have not changed. And those invest investment institutions, which are heavily predominant in equities, uh, and don't sell them, they buy and never sell as uh, one of our very fr famous friendly persons often likes to say. And the, it, what, what you're looking at is not stock market calculation. You're looking at one relevant to the nature of human reaction to risk. So um, just um, another topic that has been in the news and you all are affected by it is the recent news about China. Do you see that as a you know, something that you're going to be very concerned about in your thinking? Uh, we're definitely watching it very closely. I mean, China has been a subject of deep uh, subject and fascination uh, for the last five to 10 years. However, at the end of the day, you look at a public pension fund, uh, we only have 3% uh, of our assets um, in, in Chinese uh, financial, fund financial investments. Um, and the interesting thing there is it wasn't so much a deliberate choice. It's just that's the development of the indices and, and our benchmark and, and where we're invested. So 
it's it's um, it's not it's not zero, uh, but it's also uh, not not large. But the 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 dominant theme really then for us is not necessarily direct investments in China. It's the implications uh, to the global economy. Um, if uh, we deglobalize, um, what what's what's the impact uh, on the United States if if two spheres of influence globally open up and and China and their um, their sphere is closed uh, to the U.S. and, and its sphere, um, you know. Yeah, I think the biggest risk is that uh, this decoupling uh, between the United States and China uh, takes hold, and that there is too much of a swing back to or away from globalization and back towards. Uh, nationalism and protection. And I think there are two at least huge global challenges where we need a global cooperation and that and between China and the United States. One is obviously the kind of pandemic that we're living through. And the other is uh, climate change. And so I, I see a, a divergence of uh, political management between the United States and China as uh, the biggest risk. The biggest opportunity, I think, is that um, we can learn from what we've done now. We have a chance, I think, in the United States to put together a, a stronger economy uh, following what's, uh, what's been happening. I'm not sure we'll take the opportunity, but, uh, but uh, we could take that opportunity to shore up support for democratic capitalism, which, as we see politically, had been kind of being challenged. Well, let me just say that uh, we're seeing a very important issue with respect to Hong Kong at this stage. Uh, I myself in 1997 said I can't conceive of a communist country giving what was effectively 50 year guarantee as to the continuation of the British related uh, Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very difficult to get these issues uh, rewound. And I think that's to the detriment of both China and the United States. Mm -hmm. Jace, um, you live with the world of risk. So, what are the risks that keep you up at night and uh, hopefully not um, up night so you can work hard during the day, but, but and what are the opportunities that you're looking at? Um, you know, our economy has creative destruction. That's the, that's, that's the core of, of, uh, of a capitalist society. However, um, you know, this might be going beyond that. This is, this is cutting pretty deep to the, to the bone and, and uh, especially those small and mid-sized businesses, what are we losing uh, through this crisis? And what is, what is the impact to our, our portfolio, certainly, and our society, our economy, everything else? So um, that, is, that is the key risk uh, at this point in time to me. Opportunities going forward, I mean, there's certainly just going to be um, dislocations occurring, plenty of opportunity for people that, that have uh, liquidity and, and ability to invest. So all of that change and transformation is just a perfect setup for someone like us who will be able to invest in those opportunities uh, and um, help, uh, help, help strengthen the economy in the future. Well, I think that's all the time we have today. I wanted to once again thank Jace, thank Alan, and thank Caroline for this incredibly interesting conversation, and I look forward to many more. Thank you for being here today. Thank you Thank all. You.